In this video, we will continue solving triangles using the law of sines when confronted with the ambiguous case. Now, the ambiguous case is when we have the side-side angle set of information given. Uh, two sides and the non-included angle. At a glance, I'm seeing that we're given um, two sides and an angle. Now, that could be side angle side but I think it's going to be side side angle so um, we call it the ambiguous case because we don't know whether or not uh, these measures will even form a triangle and if so it could form one triangle or it could form two triangles it all depends it's ambiguous so what you should do when you have one angle and two sides is uh, go ahead and draw a diagram similar to this put your angle in the lower left hand corner okay so I'm gonna call this the 105 degrees so that makes this angle B if this is angle B side B must be across from it so uh, that puts the 23 right here now I'm leaving this to be a dotted line because I'm looking at this as a swing uh, we don't know if this will even form a triangle, so it's sort of temporary. Um, now, the other side we're given, 14, go ahead and let that be the rigid side. So we've got the swing side, and then we've got the rigid side. Let the other side be the rigid side. So we can see this is the, um, oh, by the way, so if this is 14, this is side A. That makes this angle A which leaves this to be angle C. So now we can see that we have the side side angle set of information. Uh, that means this is the ambiguous case. Uh, in order to figure out whether or not this will make a triangle at all, we need to calculate the height of this triangle. So uh, I'm gonna call this H for a moment. Uh, I can find H using sine the sine of 105. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be h over 14. If I multiply both sides by 14, that's going to be 14 sine 105 is equal to h. So I'm going to put this in my calculator right now. So I'm going to have 14 sine 105. So I'm getting 13.523. So if this is 13.523, um, that's approximately 13.5. I'm just going to go ahead and write this right here. Will this make a triangle? Now remember, we are looking at this side as the swing side uh, because we're supposed to look at this as potentially swinging from left to right and I'm trying to grab it so I can show you like an animation but my computer is being sluggish okay now it moves okay if this side is length uh, 23 it will reach the ground because uh, if this height is 13.5 uh, a length of 23 is plenty long enough to reach. It's longer than 13.5. So it will reach the ground. It will form a triangle. So we'll, we'll have at least one triangle. So now the question is, can we make two triangles? Uh, sometimes you can make two triangles because if this swings through and forms a second triangle on the inside, that's how you can get two triangles. <coughs> No, <clears throat> there's no way that we're going to make another triangle in here because this swing side is 23 long, but this rigid side is only 14. So there's no way that this rope that is 23 long is going to fit inside of a triangle where the rigid side is only 14. All right, if this is 23, then it's going to stretch way longer than the 14. It's not going to fit inside of here. So the only place it's going to make a triangle 
is out here. So we're going to have one triangle in this situation. So we do need to go ahead and solve for this one triangle. So what all do we need? We're going to need the measure of angle A, because that's missing. We will need the measure of angle C as well. And uh, we'll need side C. So in the end, these are the three measurements that we will need to solve the triangle. And we'll use the law of sines. We have an angle and the opposite side. So the law of sines will start off like this. The sine of 105 over 23 equals. Now, we have this 14. That's a side. So I'm going to put that in the denominator. And that's across from angle A. So I'm going to put the sine of A in the numerator. In order to get sine A by itself, I can multiply both sides by 14. That way these 14s <coughs> will cancel each other out. Okay, so that leaves me with sine A equals all this. Now I don't want sine A, I want angle A itself. If you want the angle, you need to do the inverse trig function. So I'm going to do the inverse sine of 14 sine 105 over 23 because this is the angle whose sine is this and that's what we're looking for so this should give us the measure of angle A so I'm just gonna put all this in my handy dandy calculator so here we go second sine we're gonna need a fraction in the numerator, we have 14 sine 105. So 14 sine 105. And in the denominator, we have 23. So the, that gives me 36.012. So angle A is 36.012. I'm going to go ahead and put that right here, 36.012. We can easily find uh, this other angle C by subtracting these two from 180. Just going to do that real quick. So 180 minus 105 minus 36.012. That's giving me 38.988. Okay, that just leaves side C. Let's do the law of sines again. So we will again do sine of 105 over 23 equals. And now we have angle C and side C. So we will say the sine of 38.988 over C. Cross multiplying gives us C sine 105 is equal to 23 sine 38.988. We can get C by itself if we divide both sides by sine 105. This way sine 105 cancels out and you just have C. So I'm just going to put all this in my calculator. And I've got 14.981. So that's it for number 7. Moving on to number 8. We are this time given two angles and a side. So this will not be the side side angle situation. This will not be the ambiguous case. So we don't have to worry about that. So um, we really can put these angles anywhere we want. So I'm going to go ahead and put angle A right here. That'll be 22 degrees. Um, I'm not going to need 
this height. I'm going to call this angle B, I'll call this angle C. So that makes this the 13 and um, side C is 9. Okay, so as we begin our law of sines, well actually let's start by listing off the things that we're going to need. We're missing angle B, so we're going to need to find the measure of angle B. And we're missing both of these sides, so we're missing side A, which will be over here. And we're missing side B, which will be across from angle B. Now, let's start by finding the measure of angle B. Uh, if we are given these two angles, we should be able to find angle B by subtracting from 180. So I'm just going to subtract both of these from 180. So 180 minus 22 minus 13. That gives me 145. Okay, so this is obviously not drawn to scale because 145 would be an obtuse angle. So um, this is not drawn to scale. But I'm going to go ahead and do um, the law of sines using uh, the angle and the opposite side. Might as well write this down. So we're given um, angle C and side C. So we can go ahead and say, um, you know what, this time I'm going to put the side on the top. So I'm going to say 9 over the sine of 13 degrees. All right, the side over the sine of the opposite angle. And I'm going to do that again uh, to find side B. So I'll put the side on the top this time and then the sine of the angle across from that. So I can easily find B by multiplying both sides by sine 145. So if I do sine 145 here and sine 145 here, these will cancel each other out. Now B is by itself. So I'm just going to put all of this in my calculator. Okay, for B, I got 22.948. 22.948. All right, that just leaves side A that I still have to find. Okay, so I'm going to use the same ratio to begin with that I did on the last problem. So 9 over sine 13. Okay, so if I want to find A, I'll, uh, the side goes on the top, and then on the bottom I'm going to put the sine of the angle. On previous problems you've seen me do it in the reciprocal way, with the sine of the angle in the numerator and the sides in the denominator. Um, it doesn't matter, you can do it either way. But uh, by doing it this way it will save me a step because all I have to do is multiply both sides by a sine of 22. Not sure why this went all crooked. That's very strange. Let me try that one more time. Okay, so I'm multiplying by a sine of 22 on both sides. That way these will cancel out and now I have A by itself. So I can just put all of this in my calculator at once. So uh, for A, I am getting 14.988. And those are the three things that I needed to find for number eight. So we're all done.